Thank you very much. Uh, before I go into the uh, uh, before I go into the uh, the details of the of the projects under BCDA, I just wanted to just uh, say uh, just one thing no? that I think what forum what a forum like this shows uh, is a word that we need in order to make all of these things happen, and that word is unity. No, and I think uh, the presence of the key cabinet members here, Senator Cayetano, uh, and the other agencies uh, under the Build, Build, Build program shows everybody, the media, the private sector, that the entire Duterte administration is one, is unified to make sure that our people benefit from all of these projects. But more than this, I think what this forum shows is that Unity extends to everybody, including the private sector, which Secretary Tugade talked about earlier. And we thank the, the captains of, of, of industry who are here, uh, our, our biggest businessmen uh, and women who are here for, for coming and showing their unity with each other and also with the government to make sure that our country benefits from all of these in the soonest possible time. So with that, I'll start with the Clark International Airport. So this is, a, this is an airport that has uh, long been studied and long been planned. Uh, Secretary Tugade, uh, who was president of Clark Development Corporation, has dreamt about this. But I think the key point that Secretary Tugade mentioned earlier and that um, uh, our economic managers uh, talked about is that all these projects are not standalone. They all work together. They're all interconnected in order to deliver the best possible service to the, to the people. And the Clark International Airport is one of these projects that, are, uh, that is linked to the other projects, such as the PNR North from Manila to Clark, such as the Klubik, uh, Subic Clark Railway, which I'll talk about in a bit, and to all the uh, other road projects in the Luzon Spine um, program of DPWH. And um, I wanted to show you uh, the master plan for this project. Para po uh, makita natin na hindi na ito drawing lang. No? Um, this is the Clark International Airport for, for everybody's uh, uh, information is 2,400 hectares. To put that into perspective, Naia is the entire Naia complex is 650 hectares. So this is four times the size of Naia. Now that's why we have more land to work with and we have more room for expansion. Uh, the French government provided a grant to the Philippine government way back in 2012 and they chose um, Aeroports de Paris uh, to do the master plan. Secretary Tagade and I were there in Paris just a few weeks ago and we spoke to Aeroports de Paris and we assured them that the master plan uh, of Aeroports de Paris would be implemented within the Duterte administration. So the, the master plan is from phase one to phase four. It builds up Clark from 8 million passengers per year to 80 million passengers per year in the ultimate phase. And this is the ultimate phase. If we could just maybe click on everything already so that everybody sees the key components of the ultimate phase under the uh, French uh, master plan. So 80 million passengers per year, three terminals, uh, three, uh, three terminal, uh, sorry, four terminals with a transport hub in the middle of all the terminals, just like what you see in Singapore, in Changi, in Hong Kong, uh, and in other uh, world-class airports all over the world. Um, you have a MRO facility, uh, which by the way now houses uh, SIA MRO. Um, you have a express freight terminal facility. You have a uh, cargo facility. You have a FBO and general aviation facility. And also 200 hectares reserved for a mixed use airport city. So this is the entire uh, Clark Airport Master Plan. The Duterte administration commits to build the first phase, which calls for an expansion to 8 million passengers per year, with a new world-class terminal 
a uh, transportation hub with all the trains, uh, Manila to Clark, Subic Clark, connected to the airport, and with a rail connection to the new city we are building in Clark. So uh, our schedule here is to uh, break ground, meaning shovels on the ground by the fourth quarter of this year, and the new terminal to be completed by end of 2019 or early 2020. Um, the next project is, as Secretary Tugade pointed out earlier, is part of the overall uh, Metro Manila BRT uh, system. Uh, but this is a system connecting uh, Bonifacio Global City, Fort Bonifacio, to uh, Naia, not to the Naia complex. Since uh, both uh, BGC and parts of Naia are stand on uh, uh, BCDA land, then we uh, offered our assistance and our support to DOTR so that we can build this right away since there are no uh, right-of-way issues here. So I wanted to show you um, the feasibility study is ongoing and I wanted just to give you a glimpse of the stations and the alignments and I just wanted to acknowledge uh, our partners in FBDC uh, and Mega World who have helped us you know, develop this plan, uh, really the uh, one of the things we are very proud of in the Duterte administration is that we are really seriously working together with our private sector partners to make sure that all of these projects happen. So this is the alignment within Bonifacio Global City. These are the stations. The goal here is that if you are a commuter and you get off in a station, it will only take you five minutes to walk to your place of work. Now that is the goal. No, of the of the BRT design for uh, BGC. Uh, we can move on. This is now the um, alignment uh, along Lawton Avenue and the uh, McKinley West area all the way to uh, uh, Pasong Tamo Extension. And then leading us all the way down to Naia and all the way to the uh, LRT1 station, uh, which is already very close to Naia. So, I, I think the, 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 what is different with the, with the kind of planning that the Duterte administration is doing is we are not doing things piecemeal. Hindi po yung papachi pache, ano, na madagas nangyayari sa atin, no, sa Pilipinas. Uh, so we are trying to connect everything so that uh, if we were an orchestra, no, every part of the orchestra sings in harmony, no, and we don't, uh, we don't uh, sing uh, and uh, play out of tune. No? So that is, I think, the hallmark of the kind of leadership that President Duterte uh, uh, has. No? And this is the Naia. This will be from Bonif Bonifacio South to Pasong Tamo. It's red. We marked it red just to emphasize this is all underground. This is the, the plan here because as you're very familiar with this uh, place, uh, there is no way we can build above ground here. I mean, and Secretary Togade is going to kill me because he's going to be hit with uh, issues of traffic again you know, if we start building underground. And our people will probably, you know, continuously uh, uh, curse at us if we build up above ground. So this will all be underground from Pasong Tamo extension, sorry, from Bonifacio to South all the way to LRT one extension. Oh, by the way, uh, the Naia Terminal 3, uh, as we discussed with Secretary Villar, will connect, uh, that station over there will connect to Runway Manila you know, so that we can uh, have an easier and more comfortable connection underground to Runway Manila all the way to Naia 3. Okay, um, the next one is the Subic Clark Railway Project. So this is um, a primarily a, ra a cargo um, rail connecting Subic Seaport to Clark Airport. Uh, Secretary Tugade has been talking about this uh, for the past several years, but uh, sadly it fell on deaf ears, but now uh, we will be building this railway very, very soon. I think the target uh, start date is also the qu fourth quarter of 2017 and completion is 2020. Uh, and this is the initial alignment. Now we're doing the feasibility study now. It, it should be completed in a few weeks. This is the initial alignment. So it will connect uh, not only the airport, but from all the way to the new city we're building in New Clark, all the way to the port in, um, in uh, Subic. No, so so in, and in order to avoid issues of double handling, 
it really has to terminate in the in the port so that the containers go straight from the vessels to the to the rail. Um, okay, uh, can we uh, move this? So New Clark City. This is uh, this is the actual site, and this is what we envision New Clark City to be: the most modern, the smartest, the greenest city in the entire country, comparable to the smartest and greenest cities in the world. Um, and it's really uh, the most uh, ambitious project. Uh, uh, not only of BCDA, but I think of the, of the government, because really uh, uh, building a city uh, as our friends uh, and our partners in the development industry know is no easy task. Um, but we really believe that this is the long-term solution to the Metro Manila uh, problem, because the only way to solve the congestion in Metro Manila is really to develop other places outside. And we feel Clark is ripe for this sort of development. And just to, um, to give you some updates on this, the master plan for this is, so, sorry, the master plan, uh, sorry, uh, the master plan for this uh, is already in its final stages of completion. Um, and uh, this is being done by our partners. Of course, we are, we are doing this with the Japan Overseas uh, Network for Infrastructure Development. And uh, AECOM, uh, out of their office in Singapore, and uh, Nippon Koi are our partners for this. So we can really expect a world-class city. And uh, the phase one will really be the, 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 the first block, will really be the area that was won uh, by PhilInvest land, 288 hectares, the um, mixed income housing, and, um, and the future uh, national government center, which Secretary Ben Jokno is very excited about. Uh, by the way, if I can just, uh, again, uh, speak for Secretary Tugade. Um, Secretary Tugade uh, will not only talk the talk, but also walk the walk. And he will be the first national agency to move to Clark in July of this year. He will move to Clark, July of this year. In fact, I was finished or not finished, he will move to Clark. Obviously, he will not move to, to New Clark City because that's, that's still being developed. But he will initially move to the main zone in the Freeport and then eventually... Uh, since he was the first mover to Clark, he will have the first and probably one of the best uh, offices there in the new city. Um, and then um, I wanted to show you, if we could go back, that in the photo drawing lang, no? we are actually building the roads there already, and this is actual construction ongoing. And if we can just show a short drone video of actual construction going on. So these are now the roads, of course, with the help of DPWH. These are the initial roads that are being built. Built. This is the road we are building across the Sakobia um, Valley, uh, 15 kilometers to connect the airport to uh, the new Clark City. So, um, and uh, this is, and we are very excited about this. No? Even the roads in the new Clark City will be the first of their kind in the country. They will be the first of their kind. They will have wide pedestrian lanes, uh, exclusive bicycle lanes. Uh, obviously, the carriageways for the cars will be there, but they are already being designed with mass transport already as part of the plan from the very beginning. So this is how the roads will look like in the, in the new Clark City and we are already building them as we speak. So we plan to finish, and this is a, a rendering from AECOM of, of how we envision the, the new Clark City to look like um, several years from today. So um, I think uh, with that, uh, hopefully we, we, we get the support that we need from the private sector uh, and of course from the government agency. So, on behalf of BCA, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Vince.